três <risos> Hello, welcome, welcome to Blood Lament. I am your game master, Esper. I've been looking forward to running this adventure for quite some time. I've got some, some fine fellows with me here, really happy to be gaming with them. This is an adventure that I wrote in tandem with uh, my recent book, Esper's Emporium, and um, it uses content from the book. Uh, if you're interested in checking those things out, just go to esperthebard.com or check out the links down in the video description. Um, I'm excited to get right into things here, so I'm not really going to take very long here with the introduction. I do use some house rules. Those of you who have watched my other live streams like uh, Mirror Morn and uh, Land of Dreams and Nightmares, you'll be familiar with them. These guys might not be quite so up to speed, uh, so, you know, give, give them a... Give them, uh, some um, go easy on them I will kind of try to go easy on them um, I don't know this this might get ugly but we'll see what we get into uh, yeah why don't you guys introduce yourselves uh, players and, and your characters and then we'll jump into things we'll go, we'll go AJ Jared JB Demos okay okay hi my name is AJ Pickett um, I run a new YouTube channel about Dungeons and Dragons lore and I'm going to be playing a, a dragonborn named Gwox. And your class? Hey. Oh, he's a uh, trickster, paragon. Part-time pirate. Probably full-time pirate. We'll see. Hey, my name's Jared. I'm going to be playing Atticus Her Herodus, which is the paragon sovereign, and he'll have a associate a Ikorite named Remus, who will be his spiritual guide and physical guide through a dangerous and deadly world. Hey everybody, I'm JB, better known as Drop the Die Everywhere. Today, I will be playing Sinus. He is an Ikorite gladiator. He's actually a specialist with daggers. Very interesting build and the gladiator fighter uh, that I'm going to be playing is neutral evil for this campaign, but it is not neutral antagonist, just for everybody at home. Hello, everyone. I'm Dimos Tennis, Nestoridis, or Dimos. Uh, I will be playing a swamp dwarf, and he will be a cleric, uh, and his subclass is the Majesty Domain. Filthy, filthy dwarf, really. 
Am I saying his name right? Grazam? Grazam? Grazam Vlaxma is is his name, yes. Excellent. Glad to have you with me, guys. Everybody, I am learning uh, this new format, this new look. So um, if I fumble something, go easy on me or tell me that something has gone horribly awry. Um, All right. And I do want to give uh, just a quick extra special thank you to both AJ and to Jared. Um, They both helped me in different ways in making my book. Jared went above and beyond the call of duty, helped me with a ton of playtesting and some editing and feedback. And uh, AJ helped me get the word out. So thank you so much. There's there's a couple there's a couple NPCs in my book that bear a strange resemblance to these characters here. Okay, everyone. Um, well, our tale begins in a region known as the Fertile Splay. Um, I have a map for that. There it is. Yes. So um, the Fertile Splay is a region that has some different sub-regions to it. There's this river known as the Alhaya that kind of cuts through the center of it. And the Alhaya River, it... Um, it separates what's on the west, which is a, uh, a rocky badlands that eventually tapers into a semi-arid steppe and then eventually goes into deserts. On the eastern side of the river, there is a, uh, there's a, there's a, a cactus forest. Uh, up north, it gets pretty, um, it turns into a wetlands, into a delta. The seat of power and the eastern part, really kind of in the hub of it, is the Golden Palace. They're the hub of commerce in the region. Uh, House Shamira are the, the, the long-standing leaders there. And then the to the west is Tarabir Palace, which they're more of the spiritual, religious leaders. They also ha- uh, run mines. So they're, they're two kingdoms. They converge here at this river. They rely on each other. They've long been allied um, to, to get through their life here in this, this warm southern, southern region, the Fertile Splay. The region was racked by war, by a civil war. It erupted some 20 years ago. Um, it, it began at the Golden Palace with a group of rebels that were led by a... Um, we could call him a, a, uh, a politician, a, um, a, a noble leader. And then it spread quickly throughout the entire region. And soon it was the rebels fighting against the status quo, the monarchs and all the local governors and rulers. Um, it what lasted were the about rebels, f- what were rebels called? What were the rebels called? Well, who was the leader of the rebels? So it began with a fellow named Hamati Ramax. And Hamati was a noble in the Golden Palace and he sympathized greatly with the the working class the miners the laborers and he had some pretty extreme uh, views Uh, it is true a lot of the laboring class did work in very rough conditions and some of them were a little more than than slaves or serfs Uh, so this hamati fellow he sympathized with the kind of malcontent uh, folk and he would he gave private speeches he eventually kind of whipped them into a frenzy he said that he was going to take the seat of hierophant hierophant is a title in this region it's it's, kind of, it's like above the priests and minor nobles but it's below like the kings and queens and and high priest it's a pretty high position so hamati said i'm going to take the the seat of uh, hierophant kethawat um we're going to completely redo our our structure of our society i'm going to take wealth from the nobles and i'm going to give it to the laborer class uh he became so disruptive that the king at the time targon shalmira of the golden palace actually imprisoned him uh but lo and behold he was sprung from his cell by a guardsman who was privately or secretly a follower of his and then hamati led this revolt it spread like wildfire. It led into a, a region-wide conflict. It was a bloody struggle, lasted for five years. Most of the leaders on both sides died, either in the fighting or to assassinations. And uh, eventually the rebels, the rebellion was quelled. 
Um, so it ended, say, some 15 years ago. Things have not have not gone quite so well in those in the intervening years, particularly with Tower Beer Palace. The trade goods that they would usually, you know, t trade with with uh, the Golden Palace, um, the ore, the gold, the salt, the sanctified incense, and the the religious training and the education that they would provide to the noble classes, all of that has essentially redu reduced to a trickle. Tarbir has been beset by a drought, by a plague. Um, they are they're limping along and they're they're barely just hanging on by a thread. And there's a lot of tension because while for a while the Golden Palace was understanding that they would take, they would need some time to recover, they show no signs of improving still. And it's been 15 years and they're, um, the whole region is just suffering both economically and culturally. Um, the current like young upcoming nobles, are, they're not getting educated. Uh, the Golden Palace is missing a couple, a couple hierophants. Um, so there's this turmoil and it's not like Tarbir doesn't have its criticisms as well. I mean, the whole war started at the Golden Palace to begin with. So there's, there's unease, there's tensions. The region is somewhat in decline, but a long standing tradition of alliance between the Golden Palace and Tarbir Palace does still exist. Um, they are still at least technically, um, allied or even brethren some might say so we're gonna we're gonna focus in here now about a day's travel to the east of the golden palace in this this town called doreo and a couple of you are from doreo in fact atticus you're from doreo sinus you are as well doreo is it's a good-sized town Though the population has not fully recovered from the war yet. Um, it has architecture that is largely in uh, red granite and green stone. Uh, it's defended by a pretty well-trained city guard. It has a small, elegant yet elegant castle. It's well known for that. It's also well known for its gladiatorial arena and its, its fighting pits. It's kind of a gladiatorial town. Uh, it's also a, a hub of agriculture. It's close to a lake. So it produces a lot of grain for the region. Uh, so it is now presently a, a warm late spring afternoon. On the streets of Doreo, the four of you, actually there's technically five of you, are walking along. There are vendors left and right hawking their wares, musicians, dancers, children laughing and screaming, parents trying to keep their young ones from running amok, uh, street dogs, uh, people selling food and eating. You can smell dung, food cooking, people smoking. Um, it's, it's pretty loud. You're here in the, we'll say the, the city center in the market. So you all are walking along um, does one of you walk in the front? Is one of you a, a leader? Do you walk side by side? Are you just in a... Uh, 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 without any particular organization, just kind of wandering in, in whatever formation as you will? I can't oh, speak... I can't speak for anybody else, but I can just imagine that Sinus would not stop for anybody or anything or slow. So I'm imagining he just naturally moves to the front. Because is quite ambitious, so okay. he's probably so going to be. So what do we close. what do we see with Sinus in front? Uh, if Atticus is right behind, I'm imagining that whatever Sinus sees that interests him, he just cuts through the crowd, like a spear point. He just pushes people out of the way and makes room, and then everyone kind of filters behind in this this open diamond as the crowd parts from this gargantuan statuesque figure. If you would like me to describe Sinus, mm -hmm. mm. uh, Sinus is uh, five foot 
five, so he's not extravagantly tall, but he's very, very broad, wearing the telltale basket helmet that gladiators would wear with this mohawk of uh, bronze feathers. And it seems from the very tip of those feathers down to the bottom of his sandals, he is entirely made of dark bronze. Flesh, eyes, fingernails, the armor that he's wearing, it all seems to be part of one creature. Apart from a donning of six daggers, uh, four strapped to his girdle, and two clenched in his white-knuckled fists, if he had such colorations, are daggers. That is all he has on his person, save for a single chakram hanging from his back by a lanyard. When he pushes through the crowd, he kind of flexes these gargantuan muscles in his chest and arms aside whenever he moves by people to get them to move out of the way. He is a pretty imperious individual. And I'm imagining, especially since uh, we're in a crowd of everyday people, they would be surprised at his footfalls as he weighs nearly 300 pounds. <laughs> despite his diminutive stature. Following behind Sinus is... Who? Behind, around, sweeping in, in, in between these two is a dragonborn who almost dances around with this long pole, uh, this uh, trident that he's carrying. He's so nimble with it that he almost gestures like an Italian every time he talks. This thing is spinning and moving, constantly tracking around as he almost dances around his friends. They're moving so slowly that he sort of leans on them and gestures and his arms are twined around theirs occasionally and he'll walk around and he's almost forming a perimeter as he, he, he spins. So he's never in one particular position and he's always watching for eager hands that are possibly looting the pockets of his tall and slow moving companions but he's for show they're so shiny they're like his horde and soon after guax we see whom i'd like to have atticus he stands the shortest out of the group but his back couldn't be any more straighter and his head held any more higher as he attempts to <laughs> share with the countenance of his companions. Uh, the, the other figure that's with him is similar to Sinus, although far more subtle, and he's made of a uh, rusted bronze. So there's like brown with flecks of green running across his body, and he too has a similar metallic nature about his body. Although he's far less imposing in his stature, he's cool, calm, collected. He stands as if gently observing everyone in the group. And if he speaks a word, it is cool, soft, and reassuring. Atticus, however, is quite headstrong. And he's he's looking at Sinus and thinking, Whatever he's, whatever he's interested in, I, it surely is part of the will of the gods. I will follow him. And then we have one in the back, I think. Do we yes. Uh, about two or three feet behind, uh, a short swamp dwarf is trying to keep up with uh, those tall, big fellas. He's half running, half uh, walking because he doesn't want to uh, to run to show them that he can't keep up, but he's between his breath, he's like, okay guys, we, we can we can walk a little bit uh, slower, it's, it's okay. And you can see a dwarf with with some armor, but you can't see the armor. There, he's full of fungus, you can see his big belly, his messy beard, his messy hair, his He's having a, a shield on his hand and a hand, hand axe is on his hip. And he's trying to, to push the people that, that are in front of him and he's trying to just keep up with, with, the rest, with the rest of them. He's a mess. And people, just as I'm passing by uh, next to people, they're just 
grabbing their nose, and uh, mm. I'm not I'm not very pleasing. Peculiar uh, odors wafting of... off of Grazam. Yes, <laughs> I'm not pleasing to any of the senses. <laughs> uh, Sinus, your your daggers, are they kept on a belt, a sash? Do you hold them? What do you What do you do with all your daggers? Uh, the four that are around my waist are strapped to a thick, heavy bronze girdle that encompasses my midsection. And they're just hanging from metal loops. Uh-huh. Like they were maybe decorative at one point, and those have been discarded. And now well-worn, very natural-looking daggers hang in those same loops. The two in his fists are still made of solid bronze. Like they came with the package. Okay. Okay. I'm getting, I'm getting a sense of it now. Um, Atticus, I might have missed it. What kind of weapon do you have on you? He has, uh, hanging from one, one, one side of his hip, you can see a collection of nets carefully stitched together, similar to that that are used in the gladio- gladiator arenas. In fact, they're probably a symbol of the gladiator arena. And of course, he has a trident as well. I feel that tridents are probably very popular, fashionable even, in this region. Possibly so. It, it, do you hold the trident in hand like Wax does? Or do you have it in some kind of sheath? He pro- he probably has it uh, in a sheath at, the, at his back. Okay. Uh, he is always ready at hand to, to draw it, though. All right. Excellent. So uh, I've got a pretty good Im- uh, image of you all. Guax, as you you twirl one of your flourishes with your trident, someone you hear says, What's what you're doing with that? And someone is actually g- grabbing it. It first seemed like they were trying to, like, you maybe accidentally would hit someone, and they were blocking it, but they've actually grabbed onto it. Simultaneously, somebody uh, is, is attempting to grab onto Atticus's trident as well. These things are too dangerous. Shouldn't be walking around with them. Um, Grazam, somebody says to you, Hey, that is mine! And is like trying to grab your, your holy symbol. You have a, a holy symbol around your neck. And um, I f- seem to have forgotten somebody. It's not the big, <laughs> there's not the big one in front. Ah, yes, uh, Remus, the, the companion of Atticus. He he carries uh, which weapon? Also a trident. Also uh, a trident. A spear, a spear, sorry. A spear. A spear, spear and okay. shield. So, yeah, the similar thing. Some There's someone that comes out of the crowd. It seems to be a group of them, but they came from different angles, and they seem to be saying that these trident things are, are too dangerous, and someone is also saying that Grazam actually is wearing his, his jewelry. So... We're going to do this one at a time. You're going to make a perception check. Guax. Um, I, I'm very distracted by this. I'm, I'm staring aghast at the, the hand on my, my beautiful trident and have not most n- noticed much else. Um, so that's a... Uh, that's a five... Okay. Perception. All right. So I've got. So low was hard to calculate. I've got a, an eleven. All right. So um, we're going to quick. We're going to assume you're rolling for initiative. At the start of the initiative, you and this man both are grabbing onto your trident, kind of fighting for control of it. Uh, Atticus, give me a perception check. Atticus gets a sixteen for his perception check. Okay. I've got an. 18 actually so uh it's the same oh wait no you had yours in a sheaf um this person this accuser has actually taken your trident got it out of your sheaf and has it in hand uh no one messed with sinus uh roll a perception for remus (laughs) Ooh, that's gonna be over 20 23 okay remus notices this um, thug type person in time and, you know, yanks away his trident and the person just, you know, grasps thin air. And then Grazam, go ahead with a perception check as well. That 
That's a seven. <laughs> that is a seven. Okay, I've got an eighteen. Yeah. All right. So, as soon as you're, you know, as you're even realizing that the person shouting at you, that is mine. Uh, they've like taken your holy symbol right off your neck, just stolen it right off of you. So, if you guys look uh, like on what I'm sharing behind the scenes on our um, Discord, you'll see the the battle map there. And then everybody who is watching should see. Here we go. All right. So um, let's do this. Uh, you guys have been assaulted by these bandits or street thugs or something. There are four of them. Uh, this is Sinus in front. Sinus, the, the mighty gladiator who... It seems that no one wanted to um, accost him. Uh, this is Guax, our dragonborn trickster. Guax and this thug fellow here are currently wrestling for control of his trident. This is Atticus. Um, this bandit here has just swiped your trident. Um, this is Atticus's companion, Remus, who has noticed this thug here in time and reeled back and has not gotten himself compromised in any fashion. This is Grazam, the Swamp Dwarf, whose holy symbol has just been taken by this masked fellow here. Everybody, roll for initiative. It's an eight for me. Eleven for me. Seven for Atticus. And a two for Sinus. Okay. Razam, what do you do? <laughs> okay. Uh, when he grabs the, the symbol out of, uh, from me, I'm, I'm shouting into his face. Do you want your mother to find you with an axe sticking out, out of your face? And I want to grab my axe and just, uh, I want to, to stick it into his face and okay. yeah, hit him. With. He raises a hand with a short sword to block. Let's see what you do. Go ahead. Okay. Oh. Oh. You want me to screenshot it? It's a natural 20. Uh, if you would like to, you can, but it's it's up to you. Wow. Yes. <laughs> you, you have been provoked into great furious rebuke as you are a holy man yourself and someone has taken your precious holy symbol into his dirty, grubby grasp. Oh, wow. Yes, I just want to hit him. Please, uh, please, roll, double, please roll double your dice. Yes, that's seven slashing damage. Okay. Um, which one is it on you here? It's B. Seven. Seven. Okay. Uh, he rolls with the attack. It seems to be a pretty light wound. Guax. Okay. Can I can I use oh, my yeah. bonus action? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, I want to cast sanctuary uh, on the. Yeah, on my fr on my friend the Dragonborn that we have we have been fighting together for some time. So yes, I'm casting sanctuary on him. All right, you call down you call down a holy sanctuary to protect yes. Guax. And it is Guax's turn. And Guax, you are here struggling with this fellow in the uh, the the dark colored cowl who also appears to be um, armed. He's grabbed your trident and... Give me that! You're going to poke someone's eye out! What do you do, Guax? Well, um, luckily this is a quite a versatile weapon, so I can grasp it with one hand and then very, very quickly take up a wooden belaying pin and smite this guy right up the side of the head. Okay. Just quick, just quickly and quietly. So that's a 
13 to hit. You have struck the foe. Nice. He's going to take a total of four points of clouting damage on the side of his head. Question for you. As a trickster paragon, you can treat any one-handed weapon as a D10 damage. Did you did you do that? I did. Okay. All right. So just four. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's let's pretend he's pulling the blow so he doesn't take the guy's head off. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. So you whack him. Um, now, as far as I understand, that actually would take you out of the sanctuary because you've performed a hostile action. Well, I'm not too worried about missile attacks at the moment, and yeah, I wasn't expecting that. All right. So, alas, Grazam, uh, Guax is not having your your call for peace and sanctuary and defensiveness, and he he smacks the guy upside his head. Um, let's go. His fate was sealed. What can I say? <laughs> let's go to. It's actually one of the one of the foes. It's uh, it's the one who attempted to grab the trident from Remus. Um, these foes, their equipment is not great. They have clothing that's, you know, damaged, dirty, needs repair. They have bits of a little bit of armor, you know, a little bit of a light leather cuirass, maybe a tiny bit coif or partial bit of some rusted light chain. Their, their armaments are really not great. They have some weapons, but they're crude things. Uh, dented, pitted, rusted. No major weaponry to speak of. The one who um, is accosting Remus grasps hold of... Uh, it's just a, like a heavy club thing. Maybe like a, a junked out mace. And uh, tries to lay into Remus there. Uh, I assume a 22 hits and an 8 misses. A 2 will hit. Okay. Uh, Remus deflects or evades the first swipe. The second one catches him on the off swing and knocks him for a 7 bludgeoning. All good. Atticus, you see this happen. You see your, your trusted companion, someone who has served your father, your family, who was sent by the divine suffer this blow how do you react to that you dare touch the herodus family and i will bane three the three individuals who are flanking us at the moment okay um there are four of them in total do you have a preference as to which three of the four uh i think the dwarf can uh the dwarven one my one and remus's one okay and they all need to make dc uh, 14 charisma, wisdom saves. Right? Uh, yeah, charisma, charisma, yes. Charisma or wisdom? I think, it, I think it's wisdom. I think it's charisma. Let me see. Bane. It's charisma, yes. It's charisma, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, all right. So let's do this. Uh, first the one who is accosting Remus. 17. The one at Demus on Demus on Grazam. Thirteen. And the one who is stolen your trident has a failure of a ten. Uh, what was your DC? Fourteen. Two of them. Okay. So Grazams and Atticus both banged. A, A and B are hit with Bane. A. Thing. Okay. You call down this curse upon the f- three of the foes. Uh, one of them resists it, laughs at you. Da! Your word is like a camel spit! The other two shudder. Ugh! What is this? Um, if you have nothing else, we go to Remus. Uh, you can have Remus act before or after your turn. Directly before or directly after. So in this case, he'll go after. All good. Remus will say, Only a blunt mind 
can hold a blunt blade. And he will... He's going to try and shove this this vagabond into the what looks to be a bunch of barrels behind him. Okay. Okay, well, that is a 11 total. Okay. The foe will attempt a strength check. Uh, comes up with a 21. It's not able hey, to you're not going thing. anywhere! Get your hands off of me! Um, the one right next to you, Atticus, who is taking your trident, squares the trident up and says, This is what a witch gets! Your witchcraft will be skewered and you'll be roasted like like the witches of old upon the stakes! Ah! Um, he doesn't seem to quite even have proper training with the trident, uh, but he attempts to skewer you nonetheless. hee -yah. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, s s 17 to hit. I'm not, I'm not giving him any proficiency on this. And then he, he makes a second attack, which is, uh, which is totally a miss. It's very low. Uh, he does skewer you. Okay. He is, he's got some dirty moves here and his ally is actually helping him. And he sneak attacks you with your own trident. Not cool, man. <laughs> you take 11 damage, Atticus. Ugh! I've Atticus been waiting so long to get my revenge. <laughs> Die! All right. Um, so he sputters some, some strange things. Oh, my goodness. I've forgotten the bane. Everyone forgets the bane. But I shouldn't forget the bane. We might be, uh... We might just be saying all of that was just a figment of his own imagination. Just double checking. Did you uh, negative one attack? off the bane. So does a 14 hit you? Is this is this against me or against Gwok? Sorry. You, you, Atticus. Oh, yes. Uh, so a 14 will miss. A 14 misses you. Okay. Yes. So that beautiful, uh, bloody skewering you between your ribs uh, <laughs> was what he imagined in his own head that he wanted to happen. But in all reality, you uh, you block the attack. This music is loud. Uh, please let me know if this music gets loud. I have to... Oh, my. Well, I guess that's as low as I can get it. We'll just talk real close to the mic. Okay, so that didn't go like he wanted to. Does he make a save at the end of his turn? No, he does not. You just have to concentrate. Okay. We go on now to another assailant. It's the one who's just stripped Razam's precious holy symbol. He draws a blade, a short blade, a uh, an, an ill-kempt blade. It, uh, this foe will will move to here to flank you. My house rules: you get plus two to hit with flanking. He takes two attacks against you, Grazam, with his his short blade. I'm at me, bro. Huh. Does 19 come at you? He's coming at me, yes. <laughs> Remus will reach out with his shield and force disadvantage on that attack roll with his reaction. Okay, so let me see if that actually does not get him. And he has Bane as well, so he might, you might actually not get hit. Uh, okay, that's going to cause a miss. It's a mere 13. I assume a 13 does not hit you. No, it doesn't. 16 okay. it's my it's my yeah. Remus, um, well, you, you, you tell us, is he... Is he uses his hands, a gauntlet, a shield. As the dwarf is so short, Remus is simply able to hover his shield across the top of the dwarf's head, deflecting the blade before it can make its mark. Remus, a steadfast sentinel guardian of the family. Uh, the second attack probably was not going to hit. It's a 12. Uh, the foe squares up with his blade, jabs it at you. One gets deflected and the other you you block upon your shield. There is yet one more foe to act. It's the one who is struggling with guacs. Guacs make a strength 
athletics check to keep hold of your trident. Oh dear. I don't think I do, that's a three. All right, he got a 10. Uh, he rips the trident free from your grasp. I <laughs> uh, A bearded fellow missing some teeth, maybe something he was eating earlier, some cheap uh, you know, street fodder meal kind of flex out in your face as he, he shouts at you. He's gonna be eating club in a second. Ah, aha! Uh, that brings us to Sinus. Sinus, the savage. Sinus, the bold. Sinus, the bloody gladiator. Sinus just now realizes something's happening and turns and hears the din of battle and people screaming. Lifts his arms up, big muscles flexing. I will carve my glory in your flesh! He seems very happy. He goes directly westward and flanks the person right in front of Guax, flanks with Atticus. And uh, he has these two daggers already in hand. All he does is use his raptor fighting style and just slashes away at this person. Uh, one roll with the additional plus two for flanking is at 21. And the mm -hmm. other is a 19, which crits because of my uh, feet for my dagger expertise. And that is a grand total of <sighs> 19 points of slat or piercing damage. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly loses his grip on the trident and a look crosses his eyes. A look of terror. Perhaps a kind of terror that he has never felt before. It doesn't look like his morale is going to be holding up. Fear me! <laughs> uh, nearby, uh, a man, just a, a common man on the street, shouts, No! Oh, bloody battle! No! Oh! And he, he like trips over himself trying to get out of the way for, of, of not getting like completely eviscerated by the swirling attack of the gladiator. And a woman screams, Ah! And uh, some kids, you know, they, they take cover behind some boxes and they're, they're watching with wide eyes of both fear and great enjoyment and entertainment. Um, some men over in another corner begin taking bets. You know, the fighting pits come to us today. Here it is. Three on the, on the, the metal one. Yeah, the full suit. Uh, uh, what's it? Sinus. Sinus, of course. Don't have to tell me that. And so you've got quite a scene going on here. Grazam, we return to you. Uh, I want to say to Wax, you overgrown lizard, I, I protected you so you can snatch our things. So, I will give me that. And in fact, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I can't cast the uh, spell since he, he has my holy symbol. So I will try and grab the holy symbol out of his hand. Uh, okay, so, so how do you do it? You don't, ha you don't have to even tell me a skill, just narratively, what's are you like a grappling wrestler guy? Are you like a quick finger snatching it away? What do you do? Okay. Before my hands reach his body, my head goes first. I just want to to smash <laughs> everything out of him so that I can I can just try to grapple him and take my my holy symbol. Very well. Make a strength athletics check as you plow into attempt to plow into this brigand here oh uh that's a 10 so i'm trying and I, i'm i'm shouting you cynical help me take back your holy symbol you shout the name of your deity uh it got the the foe he got a nine you succeed uh, you've you've essentially got him grappled. You plow into him. He staggers back, barely keeps to his feet. You've got a hold of him. You've got a hold of the holy symbol with him. You're both like fighting for it, and it's it's turning into a, a brawl. Guax, we go to you. Uh, so I'm going to invoke my hand of fate here to literally feed this man a club sandwich. Excellent. Rolling with advantage on a... Yeah, so Hand balance. of Fate is a Paragon ability. Once per short rest, you can invoke that to gain advantage on something. 
And then each Paragon uh, subclass, Myth as they're called, will have some extra effect that goes with it. The Sovereign actually keys off of rolling for initiative, so it won't be triggering just now, but advantage is a great thing. So striking 23 to hit this guy. Yes. I do 8 oh, yes. points of damage right to his face. 8, 2, um, he was already reeling from the terrible raptor-like wound delivered by the blades of Sinus, and you whack him with the with the the bludgeon that you have in hand, and uh, you see one of his half-rotted foul teeth go fly out and you know skitter along the the market filthy market streets, and um, he he hunches over. <laughs> The, uh, the trident, I call that one the, the club sandwich. The, the trident falls to the ground. <laughs> and uh, he's, uh, he is in a world of pain. Nice. You pick up the trident? Yes, I'll, I'll pick it up with my foot. All right. You flip it up with your foot and catch it. Dexterous fellow you are. Um, the one, the, the, the thug who is next to Remus, sees that happen. Ah, sickly old man, I told you, you smoke too much! And he is going to try to step up and do what his, his ally could not. He bears down upon Guax with his mace. You can try. A rusty thing made of bronze. Um, I'm not going to give him flanking because his ally is just in too too sorry of a state to be to be threatening Guax here. Um, okay, does he have the bane? He has bane, so I have to take that off. Okay. Oh, a mere eleven. That's not going to do it. Uh, does a sixteen hit you? It certainly does not. Oh my. Okay, the bane I think just saved you from both those attacks. <laughs> Very good. Um, so he he swings, and he he you know he's forced to to eat his words. I will do what you. Ca oh, what is this damnable curse? Some force is upon him. Ooh. Something Ooh. some Christy. some ill fate is maligning his attempts. Atticus. We're on Atticus team. will will uh, draw quickly draw from his side a net and he'll fling it up to the one who just moved up to Guox. And that'll be a 15 to hit. Yes. Yes, indeed. A net envelops him and he has to make an action DC 10 strength save or take five slashing damage against the net for AC 10. So it's going to envelop him and Atticus will say, just like a beast, you can be wrapped up. You net the foe. <laughs> the one who's nearly crippled with pain is muttering something about we messed with gladiators. What 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 have we done? Uh what of Remus? Remus will move into flank against that fellow. Actually he doesn't need to because he's netted, so he's just gonna go for Gonna, he's gonna jab him with a spear just to make sure he knows his place. With a, um, I'm guessing with advantage because he's restrained. Indeed. He rolled a one and a two. Hmm. Uh, so that's a nine. Remus. He's like I do. <laughs> is struggling a bit uh, with an awkward strike there. The foe who is accosting Atticus tries to slip in and take this this opportunity while his attention is turned to netting his ally uh, speaking of opportunity he did leave your reach Wax, if that matters to you it does would a 14 hit him on the back of the head a 14 hits yep He's not really armored to speak of, just wearing the clothes as you see there on the token. 
He is somewhat nimble, but not nimble enough. It's a strike that goes over the back of my shoulder with a belaying pin. <laughs> Taking nine points of bludgeoning damage directly to the top of his cranium. Ah! I barely even look at him. Ah! Ugh. And um, I'm going to probably keep um, talking about little features and stuff from Paragon as we go, both for the benefit of you all who are just playing one for the first time and for the, the people who are watching who aren't familiar with the, the class yet. I guess, Jared, you've, you did plenty of playtesting, so you're pretty familiar with it. So with that D10 damage thing on the Trickster, uh, it doesn't work for two-weapon fighting. Now, obviously, that's not what Quox is doing here, but just so people know out there, you, you, truly, it's just for when you're using a one weapon. You can hold a weapon in your other hand, no problem. It's just it doesn't work if you're actually doing the dual, the dual wield thing. Okay, so you crack the bandit. You, you crack this street thug, and um, there's a, a yelp of pain that he gives, but he's too prideful to give up on his, on his strategy that he's kind of paid the price for now. And uh, he attacks flanking Atticus, um, continuing to remember the bane. Oh my goodness. I just realized he has cunning action. He could have disengaged. Ha! Ah! Well... If anybody was a He'll stickler, remember I that say, now. I could just say it was the it was the uh, half end of the trident smacking him in the back of the head, not the not the club. Same yeah, I, I'm I'm juggling a lot here. All right. Uh, oh, you're doing ba- great though. The bane yeah. the bane takes off four fourteen. I, I forget fourteen misses you just barely, right, Atticus? Fourteen misses. All right. Well, he's got a second attack with his. What's he guys got the short sword, right? Yeah. This might be the best Bane I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, it just knocked another four off on that one, and he misses again. We're doomed! <laughs> We've been doomed from the start! Uh, they seem to have some banter amongst themselves as to something hasn't been working out well f- for them for some time now. You're not quite sure what they're referring to. Hmm. Hmm. Um, there's another one who is going to make his attempt. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, Grazam, you are in the midst of grappling with this with this fellow here, this masked one. And um, I think he decides that that holy symbol is not worth it. He lets go. It's fully in your grasp now. And um, he attempts to strike at you with his short blade that he has in hand, his, his light blade. Um, you know what? I, no, he doesn't do that. I'm going to remember to use the foe's abilities that they have. As a bonus action, he disengages from you. Ugh, you reek of the swamp! Ugh, get off of me! Ugh. Um. Oh, you've grappled him. If, Sorry, he can't just get away from you. Grappled, he has yep, zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he's going to try to get get out of the grapple. So make a strength athletics checks. I know, I know how to run 5th edition. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Not good. 7. 14. All right. So he complains mightily of the, the swamp stench that is emanating off of you. Just take that. Take that. Just let me go, please. He, he pleads with you. He pleads with you. Just let him go. You can have your holy symbol. He'll he'll run off. He's not going to mess with you anymore. I will leave. Please just God, stop touching me. As he's trying, I want to to just push him more into my armpit and just take, <laughs> take a deep breath. <laughs> <Yes, laughs> <just like that. laughs> mm. Fetid. What can he do? He can't do much. Disengage doesn't doesn't do anything for him. Uh, yeah, good job. <laughs> um, the foe who is crippled with pain is nursing his wounds. I don't even think nursing is the right word. He's just trying to not be overwhelmed entirely. He's hanging on, really, to the last frayed thread of, of his vitality. He, you know, falls over onto his side. <laughs> no more! No more! You win! You win! 
Sinus. So the one right in front of me uh, fell over and claims you win, you win. Mm -hmm. There is no sport in this. So Sinus will move eastward, even if it provokes an attack from the guy on the ground to oh, no. flank with uh, Atticus's Remus. Icorite companion, Remus. Remus. Yeah. And he he's comes up to netted. this one. And he's also, he's also struggling netted. in a gladiator's net. <laughs> Beautiful, because I will happily take advantage. I crave blood. With advantage, I get another 19 on <laughs> the first attack. <laughs> That's paying dividends already. Yeah. And with the flanking and the advantage on the second attack is a 16. Both strike, and something tells me this fellow is not going to be faring so well. 24 points of damage. I rolled really well on those d8s. Oof. Your daggers, your, your raptor-like talons, strike the foe in the net. Yeah! He felt that. Oh, oh, he felt that. He looks seriously wounded from that strike. Um, there is a cheer from some of the people nearby who are, are spectating this. Oh, Sinus! Sinus! Two more copper. You're no more bets for you. No, he's clearly going to win. Stop. Bets have ended. Bets have ended. I hope my mic is not like going completely over sounds and, great okay You're i'm good. trying to get it hasn't even peaked once you've done here. great okay <laughs> oh my grazam you have this this malcontent bandit stuffed into your swampy armpit and he is he's he's tapping you he's struggling he's it's like a, a, a dying fish on land just flopping in your arms What, what, what else are you going to do to this fellow, Grazam? Oh. Yeah. As you wish, <laughs> you pinky. And I'm I'm letting him go, and I'm grabbing my hand axe. And mm. just as he's trying to take a breath, I want to put my, my, my hand axe into his mouth with uh, yes, everything that's with it, with all the fungus. <laughs> so, yep. And that's 19 to hit. Oh, yeah. Very much. Yeah. Uh, th three, three slashing damage. Okay. You release him from your marshy grasp, and he staggers backwards, <gasps> and you... <laughs> Whack him as he does. Uh, foul! He... Well, we'll see what he does. I'm we'll, we'll, gonna we'll wait to get this. I'm not quite sure what he's gonna do. Let's go to Guax. Guax, you... You have one fellow who is... kind of keel, keeled over to your one side. He is pleading. He is racked with pain. He says no more. He says he gives up. It... I don't know how bloodthirsty you are. I believe him. I, I believe he truly is remorseful and laments his fate and um, is in no fighting mood anymore. Mm. The person next to me is now entangled in a gladiator's net and um, not much challenge either. And everything seems to be doing pretty well. I will hit the person in the net just to be on the safe side, though. <laughs> All right. You follow up Sinus's twin blade strikes with a, a trident thrust of your Just own. Just a, a modest 10 to hit. Uh, quite modest. Not enough to hit. A strange position to be striking a foe in. Your, like weapon, a your, your, your weapon glances <laughs> off as he struggles to not be slain. A prod more than anything. Um, it is actually that restrained <coughs> foe's turn here. 
Oh gosh. Um. No more. No more. No. 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 So he he pathetically pleads for you to for you all to to to, to call off your attack. <laughs> call off your warriors. Call off your warriors. We will we will yield to you. What do you guys think? Um, they they don't have much fighting spirit left in them. Do you want to press this? Common ruffians? No. Okay. You decide. Let's not press this. They they have been thoroughly demoralized, and a couple of them wounded badly. Let me change this here. Sign we had strength in numbers. What did you have? Sinus screams, I did not come here for sheep. I came for wolves. I came for lions. And holds his arms out. Perhaps even our lesser enemies will be remembered. Uh, you each have achieved a milestone. One milestone. Um, how that works is once you get to 10 milestones, after you finish a long rest, reflect upon everything that you have seen and done and learned, you gain a level. Um, greater danger can award you more milestones. If someone truly goes off on their own and confronts danger by themselves, you can even gain your own milestones that other people don't get. For those of you who are keen on party splitting. Uh, a man approaches you. He's a short fellow. He has tan skin, he's a carefully trimmed beard, and his eyes are particularly observant. His clothing is well made, though in no way is it garish. Ugh, damnable thieves, what a disgrace. Hail to you all, your skills are most impressive. If I'd known we were going to be sweeping the streets of trash, I would have brought a broom, not a trident. Uh, they are trash. It's, I, I know who they are. I know. I know these thieves. Well, not a, not on a first name basis. Uh, do not let me mislead you in that. But these were. This is this is the the remnants of the rebellion we are looking at here, my good warriors. What? Those who those who lost over a decade ago, they they fled their losing war like wounded rats, and well, now it seems that they have no shame in continuing to spread their malice wherever they go. Remnants of the Ramex Revolt? Appalling, I know. But I, I, I please allow me to to lend my aid. I will bear witness to the local guard that you all defended yourselves against these crazed attackers. Well, it's true. Uh, oh, yes, that was the Atticus uh, Herodus family that has served you well in the streets here. Indeed, you have Atticus. And he and seems who to know. Who, he seems to know who you are. And I'm sorry. I'm who? sorry. Please, I. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Parlan. Parlan Zebadeo. He strokes the point of his beard. There is something important that I would like to speak with you all about. My patron is a merchant who is seeking capable and trustworthy men to find a missing person. His disappearance is a great concern for he is an honored warrior and it is clear to me that your group is quite capable wondrous really i don't like you what is this thing in your chin either you have a beard or not what is this well i am from the golden palace this is the fashion i do not know how things are done up in the swamps Grasm, he said he's looking for honorable men. Do you know anybody? <laughs> I am particularly keen to speak with you, Atticus. 
he he uh, gives you he gives you just kind of just like this honest open look and gesture and he, he takes a step towards Atticus kind of gets within a close speaking range good I'm hoping I'm hoping to be a, a fantastic celebrity for you then anything to help the, the cause of the temple sorry the, the golden palace I cannot speak to you your status as such but I can of one other Miruman he has gone missing Atticus your, fa- your house is friends with his house is it not yes of course he where, where has he gone missing when, when did this happen I do not have all the details but my patron does I have been tasked to find a capable group such as yourselves if I cannot rely on you, I'm going to have to turn to mercenaries. No, you don't have to do that. We, my, the, the group here, we've been together for some time now, and we, we can take on anything that you can throw at us. We shouldn't be talking business out here in the street anyway. Let's go find a tavern and somewhere to find a drink. So, uh, indeed, the, the local city guard is summoned, and you all spend a bit of time speaking with them. Um, it, it doesn't take up a great deal of time there are witnesses here in this parlon Zebedeo uh, this fellow who's um, a representative or an agent of, of some merchant from the Golden Palace he indeed does bear witness that you all were attacked they tried to rob you to to harm you and you all just defended yourselves and when they when they yielded show them the scuffed bit on my trident like I want to press charges uh, what do you want to press says the guardsman. Charges! Beat them a little! Well, if you would take place in the blood sport, you may very well have that opportunity. I'm sure Sinus here can tell you about that. We have little tolerance for crazed malcontents who try to perpetuate the bile and the venom of the rebellion. They will be sent to the sand, to the blood, to the great games. Uh, Another guardsman says, let us not be too hasty. Let us not be too hasty. Desperation can cause men to do things that they would not otherwise do. They deserve a hearing. Yes, they deserve a lot of things. Hearing, hearing, our, my hearing us is uh, one of them. And I want to grab the guy that tried to 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 to, to take my <laughs> my holy symbol. Yes, I want to just to get him <laughs> onto my height because he's he's taller than me. And I will. I want to, to look at his eyes. And I want to say, we are not done here. And. Next time I see your hand somewhere that it, do- it doesn't belong, your hand will be mine. You have said enough, dwarf. We will handle things from here, says the second guardsman. So unless you all are, are interested or invested in the kind of immediate fate, um, we, can, we can move on and the guardsmen will, will take away these men in irons. Just Once one... Once we're in the earshot, will be like... This rebel sympathizes still. Just one little moment. Uh, you all notice that Sinus does whenever he ends a fight. He holds out one flat, dark bronze palm and holds the dagger above it until a bit of blood drips off of it and hits his palm. And when it scatters across the metal of this bronze palm in front of him it's like he stares at it for a long moment like he's trying to see something hidden inside that mark he clenches his fist and wipes the blood on his slick chest and he says they have paid in blood i care not truly you have spoken follower of the blood con they have played they have paid with their precious vital fluids. Parlon um, offers to pay for a passage for a, a carriage ride. It will take about a day to get to the Golden Palace where his merchant patron awaits to, to have an audience with you all, a private audience. 
Along the way, um, you all pass through an interesting landscape, particularly interesting for those that are not from this region. Um, the, the couple of you, uh, Atticus and Sinus, you've seen it more times than you can count. Uh, it's a region known as Thorn Teeth. It's a cactus forest. And there truly are certain sections of it that are copses, thick, dense expanses of tall cactus, cacti formations. Um, and it has its own natural f flora, fauna, creatures that live there. Um, there are other stretches where it thins out and you're essentially going along a road, a, a well-traveled roadway. You see other travelers as you go. Parlon speaks um, to Atticus principally during the during the, the day of travel here. So to, to summarize or to paraphrase things, Atticus, you are the son of a centurion or a legionnaire, yes, in the, the, the defense of, of the fertile splay of the region. Your father used to have a good friend named Kabli Dahaba. Kabli died during the war. He died alongside King Targon of the Golden Palace. They died fighting together against the, rebe against the rebels. They died near the end of the war. So that's your, your father's generation. Kabli had a son, has a son, named Miramon. And you've somewhat grown up with Miramon. You don't live, you, didn't, you never lived together. He was in the Golden Palace, you were in Doreo. But you saw each other a number of times as your families would get together. And you know he is indeed a great warrior and his father before him was an even greater warrior, honored. Um, so to hear that he has gone missing and that there's scant details about it, at least that this Parlon fellow can tell you, um, is, is uh, concerning to say the least. So to the Golden Palace you travel, seeking um, this merchant patron, seeking information as to how Atticus's friend Miramon has gone missing. Um, I have an image. Let me put it in our Discord chat so you guys can see. Bear with me, everyone. I'm juggling a whole bunch of stuff now. <clears throat> okay. Oh, it didn't go. It won't go because because Discord won't accept it. It's too big of a file. Too powerful. <laughs> it's too I powerful. Hate that so much. <laughs> so what can I what can I do, guys? Um, gosh, I'm just gonna have to describe it with my words, and you have to use your imagination. Yeah. Let me. I'll show everyone who's watching though what we're looking at. Okay, so they're traveling from Doreo westward to the Golden Palace. And here is what they see upon the approach. But I, I will describe it. Um, the Golden Palace is a collection of white towers and spires that cluster around a massive central keep. The major structures all are capped in pointed golden domes like metallic flower buds gleaming in the sunlight. Parlon leads you through the main gate of the outer wall and up multiple flights of stairs. Guardsmen give him nods and greetings as he goes. He sends a messenger to run ahead and alert the merchant of your arrival. The palace is it's like a small city unto itself. There's roasting food and drifting perfumes spicing the air. Dozens of voices echo through the stairways, shop fronts, landings of polished limestone the majestic arcades and porticos rise up to the central keep where even more guards stand watch and parlon speaks to them quietly and he leads you inside this meeting will be of a most private nature given the delicate situation at hand come with me and he is he is actually leading you the guardsman let him through, and he's leading you inside the central keep of the Golden Palace. I, uh, I've been here before. This, this palace is quite, quite.
quite a beautiful place. Apparently, a good friend of mine, someone from the war, the son of a, a legionnaire, has gone missing. And I'm, I don't know why it involves the palace directly or why we're going straight in here, but it must be of great importance. And certainly it is. Um, Parlon says, I, I appreciate your understanding that this is not something that we can speak so frankly and openly about, but soon, very soon, you will know more. You take a long corridor that's lined with columns, then another smaller one, then through a locked door, then down, then down a long stairway that descends into a dim lower hall with an arch ceiling. So you're not quite sure where you're at in the palace. He's taking you through some different doorways and stretches, but you're now, you go down this long, long stairway, down, 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 and you're in this kind of large undercroft type area. He even takes a, a lantern from a pillar and he lights it. You will need this. It is a secret meeting. Within the shadowy umber undercroft, you wait for a time with your guide here, relaying details to you about the legend of the Golden Palace, which is said to have been built long ago by the god Zamanker, the Forge Master, and his worldly servants. From the dim, the merchant appears. She wears a fine cloak and a veil that covers all but her eyes, and she moves with such grace. Well, you all certainly look like mystics and mercenaries. And with that, she draws off the veil and her cloak fades away like a haze of mist. Her dark hair cascades down to her knees. An array of precious jewelry reveals itself, adorning her from head to toe. Her dusky beauty is enough to make your heart skip a beat. This is no mere merchant. This is Aket, the sorceress queen of the Golden Palace herself. Queen, ah, oh, I did not expect to see you here in this way. Sinus kneels. Just a hangover from his time in the fighting pit. He just <laughs> kneels to... Any nobility is a sign of respect. Guax, Atticus, Grazam, do you have any immediate reaction to seeing the queen of the Golden Palace, the sorceress queen herself? You had me at deep head to toe and gems. I'm just fascinated by those. Um, I'm just stunned looking at this beauty. And I want to say... A a brief prayer, and as I, I lift my my hands, I want to say, "Oh, you cynical! You have, at last, acknowledged my, my divine power." Yes, this is a sign, brothers. Where is the beer? Okay, oh, calm down, Grazam. Calm down, calm down. This is, this is smiles and, and chuckles a little bit. Parlan says to you, pay, pay your respects, dwarf. You stand before her majesty. That's why I want the beer. To pay my respects, no? Aket's gaze smolders in the lantern light. There's no need for that just yet. And I would hope that you all not be alarmed. Atticus, I thank you particularly for, for coming. I remember your, your father when he visited here many years ago. I hope he is doing well. He's doing quite well. I was very thankful that he was able to come back from the effort. And if I can serve in any way just as he did, let me know. I will do so. I'm glad to hear that. I'm, I'm glad that you all have come, and your mere presence shows me that you are willing to face 
the unknown. And the unknown has much to do with our present situation. Before I say much more, you all should know that the level of secrecy that our meeting has entailed is quite necessary. It has everything to do with the uh, highly sensitive nature of our current problem. I am willing to reward you handsomely, but you must vow not to share with anyone else that which we discuss. I need your personal oaths. If you cannot make this vow of confidence, then I can discuss nothing further with you. The queen, any the, queen, the queen asks you all to, to give your personal oaths to vow not to talk to anyone about what she's about to discuss with you all. On the Herodus family, I swear, everything you say here will be kept secret and stay within this palace. You have the oath of one of the lineage of Bawa's way. Yes, of course. Of course, uh, whatever the pretty lady wants. You have my oath of blood and death. I swear it. Good. As Parlan told you, someone is missing. Atticus, you know him, perhaps well. His name is Miraman. Miraman Dahaba. The last time that he was seen was some 20 days ago. He's a great warrior, like his father before him. His father was friends with my father, the late King Targon. They fought together in the war. They died together. Tell me, how familiar are you all with House Tarabir? Atticus will draw on anything he can in relation to his family, and he'll he'll probably relate right it to the war. I believe it was. Mm-hmm. So you all know the basics of everything that I already talked about kind of in the introduction exposition. Mm. If you somehow from like the, the pre-campaign document that I gave you have something that you can improvise, you're, you're welcome to. If you want to roll a, a history check to really see if your character knows something more detailed, that could be a ma- mechanical way of digging deeper if you're interested. Atticus will definitely dig, go for that dig. I know natural 20s don't count on skill checks, but natural 20. Oh, yeah. Well, that that does count. We're in, you're counting to a, a high number. so. Uh, I would, since I'm proficient, I would love to make a history check too. Very well. What I know. My He's life began 18. but three years ago. I know little. Makes sense. You might not know that much to merit actually making a check. All right. So... Uh, so, um, tell me your results, ever, the, the three of you. Can I give guidance to myself? Sure. You've been praying, so I think that's quite fitting. Awesome. Did you uh, 21? That's a total of 24. Okay, 21, 24. 18 for Atticus. 18. Okay. Well, uh, you know the Tarbeer Palace is a few days' travel from... The Golden Palace, where the rocky badlands meet this semi-arid steppe region. There's a noble bloodline of priests and scholars. They've suffered tragedies over the past two decades, including a drought and a plague. And they've been in serious decline since the end of the regional war. Who got that 24? That was Razam? Razam. Yes. You've heard bits and pieces. Uh, you come from a little farther north into the Delta from a Dwarven um, community. So you're not sure how completely reliable this information is, but you've heard bits and pieces. Um, you know something of there were these princes of House Tarabir 
that um, they did something. They 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 got imprisoned. The Tarbir themselves imprisoned their own princes. They were twins. Uh, you can't remember their names. It started with O. So, oh, do you, th you think both the names started with O? O and O. And something. There was some a atrocity they committed. Uh, it's it's. You can't quite remember what it is, but you remember something happened. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't too long before the war, right? It was kind of just shortly before the war broke out. These two brothers were imprisoned due to some something terrible they did. Um, Tarbir imprisoned their own, their own princes. Um, yeah, so that's that's what you all know. So, uh, Grazam, do you speak anything about that to your allies, or do you just keep it to yourself? Yes. Uh, I've heard uh, from some birdies from, you know, the swamp that uh, they're little sprinkly princes with all their, all their you know, uh, clean clothes and uh, perfumes and all those uh, women's stuff. Uh, they did something bad and uh, they are in prison now, but I don't know more details. I don't know if anyone else have heard about that or if... He was just a drunken dwarf who was spitting nonsense. It is it is true. The twin princes were imprisoned over 20 years ago. I don't believe they were ever released. So having said that out loud, Aket acknowledges that there is, there's truth to what you're saying. Um, she knows their names. Obar and Obaya. Prince Obar and Prince Obaya, twin princes of House Tarbir who apparently have been rotting away in their dungeon for two decades. Mm. Tarabir Palace is an important part of commerce and culture, as you know. And historically, they've maintained a substantial amount of trade with us here at the Golden Palace. They've educated our nobles. They've initiated the priests and the ancient traditions. But with their current state, what it is, they provide just a tiny fraction of the trade goods. Our, our whole region is set up for a complete collapse economically. And furthermore, these lapses in teaching are perhaps worse than what you all even realize. Uh, we still have but two hierophants maintaining my council here. There should be four. Though we two palaces have long been allies, we are suffering from great tensions. Uh, I'm sure even in Doreo, the frustrations and worries are felt, and there seems no end to Tarabir lagging so far behind. And you might have heard rumors of them holding grudges towards us here in the east due to the rebellion beginning here, and I can say that there is truth to, to, those, to those who say that the, um, the grudges continue to this day. Well, let's talk of Miraman. That's really what we're getting at, our missing warrior. His concerns were far deeper than anybody else's. He suspected Tarabir had committed some manner of grievous sin, some dark deed had been committed and it had brought a curse upon their great house. Miraman believed that Tarbir was hiding something and he believed the key to resolving the problems afflicting our entire region are there hidden at Tarbir Palace. Miraman wanted to infiltrate the palace and seek answers. I told him not to go. I told him to wait, that I would seek counsel with my Hierophant advisors, but it seems that he could not wait. I summoned him uh, a few days after that. I summoned him to a private council, and I found that he had already left. Uh, looking back, I should not have bid him to stay away from their palace. I saw the, f the fervor that was in his eyes. He blamed the death of his father and of my father on Tarabir. He considered them insufficient warriors. No, what I should have done was helped him organize an adept 
squad to perform this clandestine task that he had his heart set on. From what I have gathered, he did go with two companions, those who he could, who he could find, a druid from the southwestern desert and a treasure hunter that you two from Doreo might know. Vaitsa, Vaitsa the Scorpion. Sinus and Atticus, you know of her. I don't know if you've ever met her personally. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I'll leave that up to you all. But you know of this woman, Vaitsa the Scorpion. Just kind of a uh, self-made, willful, plucky treasure hunter woman from Doreo. So apparently Miramon didn't want to wait. Some, he was too, too fervent. Who knows? And he gathered Vaitsa and some druid from the deserts out you know, past this region. And she'll, she'll tell you some more here. They sought the back entrance of Tarabir Palace, which leads down into their undercroft. I can hardly sleep at night because of this. The thought of losing Miramon alone, that is bad enough, but far worse are the consequences of my house being implicated in hostilities against Tarabir. I fear that such a spark could reignite the flames of war and consume the fertile splay to its very core. Our people have already suffered terribly. I need you to slip into Tarabir Palace, find this undercroft that Miramon sought. Do so with utmost discretion. See if you can find Miramon and his companions. It has been over two weeks now. The Tarabiri have said nothing regarding this incident so there's no end to my speculations. What happened? Did he infiltrate but then have to escape and flee into hiding? Was he captured? Did he meet his demise at Tarabir guards or something fouler? What of the supposed dark secrets that he said were hidden beneath their palace? Any answers you can provide me will be valuable. Anything is better than waiting in tormented suspense. Miramon wouldn't die before he found out those who had betrayed his father. Surely he is still alive there somewhere. I don't know why he didn't ask me to go with him. Did he not trust me? Perhaps he didn't want you seen, see you chained to a dungeon wall for 20 years like princes. I still remember when we waited. We waited for the armies to return. My father came back and I embraced him happily. His father was nothing more than a tombstone that he wept on. Has Miraman been distant from you since then? We have had casual meetings, but I guess in recent memory he's actually been quite distant from me I still feel somewhat betrayed by the fact that he would risk his own life and not at least tell me goodbye well I pray that you can find him and that he is still alive let's go find him then if you all would agree to this, uh, it would be... Well, this is the best hope that I can see for the moment. I, I must reiterate to you all, Tarabir has long been our ally. Do not harm them unless there is just no other choice, particularly if it is a matter of defense against some secret evil. Should you discover that Miraman is legitimately imprisoned for trespassing, Return and inform me. Of course, I go yeah. with my fan for free here to rescue his companions, but our discretion is not uh, cheap. I am willing to pay you all. She offers you a sum of 200 gold pieces each. Upon the successful completion of the task, I will be more than willing to furnish you with this payment there is of course expenses for travel 
I have something that I would like to gift to you for just this need. And she draws from her silken garb four spell scrolls. There's one of Cure Wounds. There's one of Dispel Magic. There's one of Knock. And there's one of Silence. Perhaps these will aid you in your quest. Hmm. At the end, do I, do I feel that she... There are things that she won't tell us about what they are hiding into the palace or things that she might know uh, for Miraman's mission that she, she holds back. Do, do I sense something like that? Make an insight check. Wisdom insight. Okay. Can I cast the guidance on, my, on myself? If you would like to. It's up to you. It involves you praying. So if you if it's if that seems like what you would do at this moment, praying and mumbling no. out a, a divine spell, uh, go for it. Uh, no, I wouldn't. So just you don't. Inside. Are you sure? No, I don't. Uh, it could be uh, like you're praying to your god for you know, for victory. Yes, and I don't want greatness. Uh, yeah, I don't want them to think. Okay, I'm you want to be something. Shady. You want to be discreet about this. It's just in your own mind. You're just hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, go for it. Uh, I don't want them to feel that I'm going uh, after them. So, uh, 17. Okay. The hunch that you get is that Aket has spoken forth, like, frankly with you all. She seems genuine in her concerns. You, no, as far as you can tell, everything is, is, is as it has been presented to you. She is quite cunning, though. So, who's to say what you didn't pick up on? Uh, I'd like to ask her if we are going to the castle there, the Undercroft, so to speak, mm -hmm. the last place that you heard that Miramar is gone. Do we have a guise? Do we have an ulterior story? I don't want to besmirch the Golden Palace, nor do I want to besmirch my family. Perhaps we could be along a trade route or have some other goal that we can use to disguise our intention. I will leave that in to your discretion, but there, it is good that I have summoned you all from Doreo and beyond even, as you are not official guardsmen of the Golden Palace or other such. Uh, obvious persons. Don't worry, we blend, we blend in pretty, pretty good, pretty well. We, they won't know that we are different. Don't worry. They might smell something different. What do you mean? I'm having to use magic to keep myself from gagging through this whole conversation. Yes, I know, and I'm. I'm pointing at the wax. I know that this uh, this dragon refuse is uh, he might be something not not very not very you know pleasant. But uh, don't worry, we, we we will do something with him. But uh, I'm, my I'm lady, sure, I'm sure that you will. And I want to uh, put out some fungus from my belly button, <laughs> and I want to go to to her and I say. As a token of our goodwill, I want to offer you a part of me so that you remember our oath. Please, take it. I will accept this, and I'm glad that you have done this, as your oath was the one that I considered to be the weakest of you four. I no longer consider it that. Thank you for giving me this part of yourself. She gingerly receives the mushroom caps or whatever they are. I'm very pleased with myself. She does not let them linger in her palm and puts them into some kind of spell component pouch quickly. Okay. Uh, okay, do you all have questions? Concerns? Do you accept? Does everything look square to you? This whole time, 
Sinus has not moved from the kneeling position. Mm -hmm. And the Ikoriite, when they're statues still, they appear like bronze statues. Mm -hmm. So just in the middle of this hall where we're meeting is this gladiatorial statue kneeling in perfect stillness. He doesn't turn his head, move his eyes, move a finger, completely statue still until this moment when the conversation is concluded. And he stands, and when he does, there's the screech of metal on the tiles underneath his feet as he brings himself up in all of his heavy bearing. And he just says, We will see it done. I admire your confidence. Perhaps we will be able to speak again under much different circumstances one day. I have a number of challenges long standing here at my palace. Few are those who can achieve the feats. Perhaps you would be willing to try your hand at these games. Uh, despite the bronze exterior, when he flexes all of the muscles from his jaw down to his thighs, the muscles underneath the bronze flex and move in this strange squirm of power. <laughs> I will see it done. I look forward to that. My hopes are, my highest hopes are with you all. And to everyone who's curious about the race that, that Sinus is, and also Atticus's companion, uh, they are Ikoriites. Some people pronounce it Ikorite, that's fine. Uh, the Ikoriite is, it's, it is a living creature. Beneath his, his layer of, of bronze, there is, life he has a heart he has lungs he has veins that flow with a bit of divine blood there's a fleshy spongy matter that's in there uh he doesn't need to eat food or drink water he doesn't he doesn't rely on that but he does have to breathe he does have to rest he is a living creature but when he holds perfectly still it indeed does look like a statue and probably when people see you walking they probably think you're just this complete full suit of armor which in a way you are um, but there are some who do know of the Ikoriites. you're a rare uh, you, you were crafted at some kind of temple and imbued by a god, given life by a god so there are some, some initiated ones who have that sort of esoteric knowledge and they would know uh, the type of being that you and that Remus are alright, uh, so are you off? are you all setting off to adventure? Yes? Yep. All right. That's good. Uh, I want to ask a guard, like, as we're going, so w you will send us the beers ne after or what? I will arrange for you some drink that you can enjoy along the road. Aket, you would not send a dwarf to quest along the road without drink to take with him. Uh, forgive me, it is not such my custom but it will be done. Forgiven. They provide you a, a, a thick, dark barley beer, a, a nice, you know, small cask of it that you can take along with you. Great. Very well. Um, so you all set out, and I'm going to describe kind of what happens. There's about three days of travel. Feel free to jump in at some point if you're interested. If not, this description is going to get us to our target, and then we can talk about your approach at the destination. A so, rare thing will happen where Remus speaks to the group. Well, Atticus mostly, but he says, Our enemy is not known if we do not know if it is our equal, our greater, or our weaker. We cannot know if we should prepare, elude, or crush. Perhaps we should ask those what we can expect at the palace themselves. Atticus says, Well, uh, I assume that they have guards. They have perhaps soldiers. Uh, do you, does anyone here know perhaps maybe what's what could be there? Are, are you, is this still the current scene you're asking Aket in Parlon? Oh no, this is like back at this is later. Okay, so this is in fluid time as you all are gearing up to, to travel. Um, has anyone amongst you ever traveled 
to Tower Beer Palace before. It's farther south and on the western side of the river into the, the rocky lands. No? Nope. Okay, none of you have been it's there. It's so hard that's, being that's three fine. years old. There's no yeah, way. That's fine. Okay, <laughs> so at the um. moment, it's just it's just open-ended questions, and Atticus raises good questions. Do they have some kind of specific defenses? How should we approach this? Should we present ourselves in a certain way? Should we just go walk up in broad daylight? Should we try to sneak in by cover of night? What, you do what know does... that Tarbir is struggling still to recover from the war. So you don't expect that they're going to be anything near a uh, full operating um, capacity. You expect to find them in a reduced or struggling state. Does, is Tarbir near the ocean? Is it near the it's, waterway? It's not. Uh, I wish I could just it, it, share like, the map with you all I, on, I'm, on I'm Discord. The map. We is have the inland? map, and I can share it. Give me a second. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah south. because it's it's it's, south. it's, okay. it's farther south, and it's on the western side of the river in the Rocky Badlands region. It's actually it's okay. at the border of where the Rocky Badlands meets this step land where it gets drier. Do we know what it is that they normally have brought into the city? Like maybe a, an import that they often need? Yes. So uh, being imported from the Golden Palace would be textiles, grains, a lot of agricultural goods and commodities. Tara beer will be uh, now used to be. It's, it's not so much anymore, but they would export ore from their mines, gold, sanctified incense from their from their temp from their yeah, their their shrines and such at the palace. So if you're thinking, hmm, you know, could we pose as merchants? Fabric, wool, (laughs) oil, uh, uh, livestock, grain, grain would be a big one, salt. Looking looking at the dwarf thinking, if only they would take mushrooms as an import. I bring nothing with me but violence. I could not pass as a merchant. Remus slams his spear on the ground. He says, We are but guards, vestiges of the gods. We are servants. We will stand at attention. After all, all merchants need blades to keep wary hands away from them. It's true, when times are tough, a ready blade is a valuable commodity. What does the rest of you think of that that plan? Sinus and maybe someone else are guardsmen and the others are merchants. I'm going to ask, I'm going to, uh, do I know a lot about Guox? Does Atticus know a lot about Guox? Because doesn't Guox have some sort of name to himself in in regards to some sort of company, perhaps? Not this I, far inland. Not this, oh, okay. Guox described I, himself as a pirate, but he may not uh, participate in such activities in the Fertile Splay. It might be in in a different region or a neighboring region. Yeah. Uh, Well, I can, uh, we can say that I I have some herbs that uh, we can help with medical stuff. You know, my... Wait a minute. This isn't belly button herbs, is it? (laughs) Well, it's not exclusively belly button herbs, but... uh, (laughs) Are you okay? You need a belly button help to beep. To... Uh, uh, okay, I'm, because I'm you good. seem a little bit sick. <laughs> but uh, don't underestimate the swamp dwarfs. I have a lot of things hidden. Hidden. No, no. Me. Believe me, I, I'm aware you're a potent people. <laughs> okay. So. Oops. All right. So the. The main plan that I've heard so far is that uh, Grazam is a spice and herb merchant. Sinus is a guardsman. 
maybe Remus, also maybe the two Ikoriites are guardsmen. Atticus maybe is a merchant as well, and Guax would maybe also be a merchant. I could be his doctor, actually. There we go. <laughs> I could be a man at arms. I'm carrying a trident. So Atticus uh, is the merchant. Sinus, Remus, and Guax are guardsmen. Grazam is a man of medicine and prayer who also probably is knowledgeable about herb craft. All of you traveling sure. with Sinus know that he does not lie. He sees no point in it or no need. So he'll say, I submit to no one, but I will allow you to lie for me. It does not no. have to be a lie exactly. We could purchase the goods and genuinely be taking them there. Soothe your mind how you wish. Relax, my friends. I'll lie enough for all of us. Uh, Salt, grain, what can we buy? And load up. Something Horses. light and valuable. Spices. Mm. All right, Some so medicine. you all get together what funding and resources you have. Uh, Atticus comes from a more noble family, maybe a minor noble family, so... I'm thinking you probably have some resources. Uh, Guax, you might have uh, found some some booty throughout your exploits. So you do what you can and you gather together these trade goods and you probably hire out uh, a a coach or I guess you could just hire out like a, a wagon and a donkey is really all you need. A horse, like a draft horse and a wagon or a carriage. Does that sound like what you all would do I have the donkey already all right his name will be <laughs> let's call him Grasm the second I pat the donkey's head oh man <laughs> awesome name all right so you all set out um, the five of you donkey and so what trade goods you're able to uh, get together and you yeah. travel from can, the Golden Palace. Yep. Can I ask Wox? Uh, I want to ask Wox the question. Uh, Wox, uh, Wox uh, tell me, why did the lady say that uh, my oath was the weakest? Do you understand why? I I agreed like everyone else. You seem to be uh, good with, uh, with your words. Good with my words, but not with other people. I don't understand what she was talking about. It, she know. wasn't talking about me. Oh. oh. Atticus, you have any idea? Um, I mean, I've been with you for some time now, and I guess I, I'm used to your smell. I mean, the way you speak. So, you know, I guess I just see your frankness as believable, refreshing. Others, perhaps not so. And with that, you all set out. Um, let me. I'm sharing a map with everyone. I know you guys don't see it. Sorry. It's the it's the fertile display map. So I guess JB shared it in Discord. Okay. Excellent. Uh, you head southward. Yeah, you head south. This is the the quickest route there. Again, jump in at any point if you think that there's something of interest that your character would do. If not, this is going to get us to Tower Beer. So the Tarbir Palace is some 42 miles away from Golden Palace as the crow flies. Getting there on foot typically takes three days. The road most commonly traveled is the route going south from the Golden Palace. It's called the Viridian Road. This leg passes through an area where the cactus forest is giving way to the more fertile ground near the Alhaya River. That more or less takes up the first day of travel. Next comes Alboros Ford. Um, this is a it's a town where travelers can rest, trade, and you can cross the river. This is actually the narrowest, shallowest point of the Alhaya River in the Fertile Splay. 
Uh, so one can pay a small toll for a ferry, which is either a riverboat or a huge raft that is dragged by an elephant. It'll accommodate your whole party, your cart, your donkey, a bunch of other people will be on it at the same time. So you all ford the river there at Alboros Ford. And then the last leg of the journey is westward along what's called the Hallow Pass. This is a road that's going westward now into this rocky Badlands area. Um, the Badlands are called the Hums of Logam. And this is like the southernmost reaches of the Hums of Logam. So this road rises up from the river area and starts, you know, snaking through these rocky Badlands, slinking between stony hills and tors until it, you reach Tarbir Palace. Tarbir Palace, architecturally, is completely different than the Golden Palace. It's an imposing collection of very blocky architecture. It's curtained by a fortified wall. It has square towers that are capped in pointed domes, all the stony colored. And the tallest three of the square towers rise up to great heights. Uh, it sounds like you all are, are approaching by day as merchants and guardsmen. Okay. Uh, you come up to the gate, the town gate, which is on the northern side of the curtain wall. Razam, you must remember, whenever we do the speaking you just talk about the herbs themselves don't uh don't offer any um personal supplies of herbs let's just keep keep the uh professional side of things with what we've brought but the personal herbs are way up as equally professional as everything else oh yeah oh yes yes i i agree but um uh, we did this is part of the deception to to let them know that we are truly tra like we are traders with, with, with what we're brought on our donkey so you know it would be unprofessional to to offer such highly personal things such as such as the oath that you swore to the queen you can't you can't you can't water down such an act by giving it away freely to just everyone you meet it makes sense, but uh, don't think I don't know what you're doing here. But I will let it sleep. The gatehouse here on the northern side of the curtain wall of Tarbir Palace um, looks to be a pretty strong gatehouse. There are four guardsmen stationed there. They are they're inside the gatehouse and they speak to you from windows windows that could serve as arrow loops if needed. Um, they wear pointed helms, male coifs. Uh, you can't quite make out you know, all of them because they're, they're behind the fortifications. Ho oh, there! Who comes? Atticus will, will, will pipe up. Ah, trade, trade goods from the Gold Palace. Spices, exotic herbs. Things that I'm sure your city will be most grateful to have received. The guard you know, leans in close to the wall. Get your manifest ready. And they, you know, he takes his time and you hear them kind of chattering to themselves. And I don't know if you prepared some kind of document about what trade goods you're bringing in. If not, they're going to they're going to furnish something for you. Maybe I've got like a, we've got like a uh, inventory okay. document that we can. All right. So, um, you see, that that we're not... you see two of the guards remain up in the gatehouse and the other two are there as the, the gates are actually opening <clears throat> heavy things with, you know, staunch, um, uh, wooden staves fortified with bands of iron. And, um, the, these two guardsmen come out to you. They've uh, they've put their, you know, they put their weapons in sheaves, and they've got the 
tabards bearing the, the colors and insignia of Tarbir Palace. Uh, they, they come up to you, Atticus. They take a look at the inventory that you provided. How long do you plan to be staying? Oh, until we're sold out, which should be less than a week, I imagine. Make a deception check, please, Atticus. Can I, while we're, uh, we're approaching to the gate, could I have, could I have, have given him uh, guidance? Or... Okay. You have prayed. Yeah, I'll, you have I'll, prayed I'll for it. your Yes, I need the guidance. <laughs> okay, well, that's just that's just a flat 10. I said 1d4? Yeah, that's with the 1d4. Oh. Oh. The guardsman to his side says, Trade is not running so smoothly these days. You might have traveled here in vain. If you would like to wait, perhaps a merchant will come out to meet you a bit later on. Well, that's very unfortunate. I, I heard that there were some hard times out here, but uh, are you telling me that there's there's no Grand Bazaar? There's no uh, fantastic shopping arcade that we can be a part of? He, he looks up at you and uh, gives you a dismissive grimace. No, you have not come to such a place. And um, they kind of dismiss you all and they're turning around to shut the gate. But he said something that maybe a merchant will come out to meet you. So what do you make of it? I can see why merchants don't come to this place with that kind of attitude. We can give you some free specimens if you want to. And I'm putting my, my hand into my chest and grabbing out some fun. This is exactly what I said not to do. One of the, one of the soldiers in the gatehouse says, Take that back into the swamps. <laughs> what did you say, you little piece of shit? Okay, can <laughs> you, can you, Grazam, Grazam, can you, can you, come on. We've got, to, we've got to, lots of things to do. I'm going to go find the merchant. Come on. Sign if I am a sense. piece of shit, then you are the entire dropping. <laughs> uh, Sinus <laughs> just takes a, a silent step He does forward. look like a big walking, steaming pile of donkey dung. Come here to say what you have said. And I'm just trying to to, to, to get out of... Uh, Grox, help me. Grox, Grox, grab onto him. I want to go out of Not everybody grass. shares the same sensibilities as dwarves about musk and, and personal body odor. You've got Grox, to understand Are, are you aiding Atticus in restraining Grazam? <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Grazam, they're restraining you. Are you fighting against that? Okay, uh, I, I won't f fight hard because I don't want to go there. I'm scared, but I, I don't want to take them on. But uh, I, I want to make it seem like I'm doing my best to, to get free. So my, my, my feet are just kicking, kicking nothingness. <laughs> and I just want to I, I want to shout. I want to shout, come here out on the swamps so we can deal one on one if you want to, if you are a man enough. You You're going to dry me. out here. Yes, go, keep walking that way. You'll make it to the to the step land. Then you'll be a dry piece of dung. You can I'm... keep your allies warm. They burn you for cap fuel. <laughs> wow, I need some water for that burn. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I so talk you all basically are, are posting up outside the the gate. Is that what I'm understanding? Are you going to wait, see if someone comes out to meet you? We'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we will wait. Okay. Uh, Sinus, when they're moving the cart away from the gate, uh, so that we can find a place to stay, Sinus is several strides away from one of these murder holes, and he doesn't threaten or anything, but he asks very directly. Uh, does Tarbir deal in blood or coin? What the hell is that supposed to mean? It is a flat question. Do you deal in blood or coin? I don't 
able to know what this one is talking about. And they, they mutter amongst themselves, but they don't seem f like they are in favor of talking to you directly. You don't know if you if they're scared of you or if they dislike you or if they genuinely don't understand you. Uh, I would say the guards in general here have a pretty oh, yeah. unfriendly disposition towards your whole party. <laughs> I can plainly see that. Here, here is something that I would just like to put out there. You're about to as, ask for some badge numbers. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to put something out here as as the GM. And I'm talking to, to Guax and to Atticus here. You can utilize this or not. It's completely your choice. The Paragon has a feature called Serendipitous Encounter. You can use it during a rest, and you serendipitously come across someone who lends you aid. So this, for example, would be a situation in which that might be valuable. But again, maybe you want to you save it and use it for... Some people want to save it for, oh, we're even in a, in a stickier, more dangerous situation. Or, oh, I've got this personal character development moment that I'm working up towards. And I'm going to use it with that. So probably be more use if we can get into the city and then rest and then meet somebody rather than camp outside of the, the gate here and hope for the best. I actually, I, I, will, I will actually use, because <laughs> my backup was to use the Serendipus Encounter to help find Miraman, but I guess this is going to help in the long run. I would like to have a serendipitous encounter with someone who perhaps, because I use my family name on the inventory, like I'm not lying about who I am. Mm -hmm. Someone in the city who may know my, of my family and my father and maybe has either perhaps in the war, he saved their life or he owes a debt. And at some point he will hear and he will come out to vouch for us or merchant for us or something like that okay excellent after waiting and kind of roasting a little bit in the sun here it's 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 kind of hot and, and dry more exposed in this area you wait for at least an hour probably probably closer to two hours um, you hear some um, movement and some voices on the other side of the gate and then the gates being opened and a man comes out. Uh, he's a dark skinned man, uh, very dark complected. Uh, you think that he's actually not from the fertile splay. He looks like uh, one of the, of, of, of the dark skinned men from the other side of the desert uh, where there's a completely different region. He wears a, um, like a long flowing linen type clothing, fine clothing, and he wears a turban. And he carries himself, even with a, a body language or a posture that is not common to this area. Um, his clothing is nice. He has a beaded necklace. He has a gold ring on a finger. He smells of perfume. Um, hanging back a couple paces are what appear to be guardsmen from his homeland. Um, they, they have light armor. They have spears and crossbows. Not in hand, but... Well, I guess the spears are probably in hand. But they're not pointing them aggressively in your direction, is what I mean to say. They're just standing at the ready. Um, greetings to you, travelers. I heard that there was a group of merchants positioned out here waiting for a potential opportunity for trade yes yes you've heard right are are you uh jared remind Atticus me your your, fam your family's last name your family name Her Herodot heroditus heroditus yeah heroditus you bear a striking resemblance are you of the heroditus her right her right I'm yes. sorry. I'm I'm well, not so good with this heard... dialect. It are are you of the Heraditus family? Perhaps you, perhaps you've heard of my father. He served in in the war. Uh, Themistocles Heraditus. I know of him. That I do, and I know that he served well. There is honor to this name. I am Esopek. Esopek Salur. 
I come from the house of 11 stars. Uh, so he says this house of 11 stars. Uh, maybe you all have heard of it. Maybe not. Uh, it's a small, small settlement. It's, it's an, like an oasis palace on the other side of the desert, right? So it's like two regions over. There's the, the flats, which is like a step land. Then there's this big swath of desert. And then this oasis is kind of on the other side of the desert. Uh, it's a difficult and long trek to get here. Um, but uh, those people, they, they know about desert travel. And they have their own um, you know, strategies and items that help them. And they cross the deserts sometimes back and forth. And they, they usually can do so without too much risk. Um, otherwise, it is a, it's a harsh desert. It's a, it gets quite dry and sandy. Uh, so what was, he what was that himself, name again? Uh, Esopek Salur. Uh, I can type the name Esopek here in Salur. Esopek Salur. And he says he's from the Got House it. of Eleven Stars. I put it there in our Discord. Since you are of the Hereditatitis clan, I would be happy to vouch for you. And we can come inside out of the sun and perhaps negotiate for the grain that you have brought. It is always in need here at Tarabir, though the local residents are in not good bartering positions currently. And anything for the city, we would will, will be glad to accept your, your offer. Very well. Come. Uh, do y'all want to go with Esopek? Okay, so he brings you inside, um, or he he escorts you inside, and he essentially, you know, signs off on the manifest or the the kind of document that you have to sign off on as merchants entering the city. He puts his name on it as well, basically saying that he's going to be engaging with you all, um, uh, you know, plying his trade, uh, his his merchant trade with you all, and he escorts you to. Um, the single market that exists at the Tarbir Palace. Uh, this settlement is more austere than the Golden Palace. Uh, it's not as loud. It's more austere, more erudite. It also is not is not in as good of repair. So while there is a kind of classical beauty to its architecture, and there are religious trappings and religious uh, iconography embellishing you know the various sweeps of architecture it looks like some places have been damaged and never repaired others are just dirty um, you don't see as many people here and there you do see a pair of guardsmen on patrol they'll patrol around on top of the curtain wall and then sometimes they'll stop at these guard stations that are kind of spaced out along the curtain wall and then every once in a while you'll see a pair kind of filtering through the the Streets. Now, I use the term streets here in a very restricted sense. It's not a sprawling city. It's a very small contained settlement. So it's it's just a couple streets is all it is. But there's a lot of tall buildings. There's a lot of tall rising buildings. And then the palace keep itself has these three big square towers that go up like 70, 90 feet up into the air, multiple stories. Um but there are some people, right? And there are some people working and there are some people trading and there's a small marketplace. And he has a shop. Um, it has this awning that, so the shop itself looks to be part of the actual architecture of here. It's not like a tent that he set up. So he's inhabiting a, a building in the marketplace, but he has set up this awning out front of it. And um, he, you know, he calls to some servants. They bring you out some water, some nice cool water to drink. He offers you some bread with olive oil and some fruit, uh, f figs and, and grapes and olives. And um, uh, one, of the one, take of, it one of the servants, one of the the servants uh, says, "Do you take lemon with your water?" Lemon, fantastic! All right, so they, they, they wow. squeeze a half lemon into your into your cup. Um, Esopek. Um, you know, he, he gets your names. Do you all give your actual names or do you give false names? Oh, I'll give my real name. 
Oh, Adios gives did. him his real name. Of course, he already has. Yeah. I will give a for, uh, uh, not the real name. I will. I will say that I. That you I, say you maybe just say a word in dwarfish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I. I wish I, I knew dwarfish, but I will. I will say, I'm alefoot. And I think Sinus is Sinus. I'm pretty sure he's going by. His Sinus real name. speaks as little as possible. <laughs> okay, so uh, Esopex just makes a few quick comments. Uh, he already, well, he's already made his comments to Atticus. He's he knows of Atticus's father, and he considers them to be an upstanding and there's honor to the name of their of their family. That's what it is. Um, to Guax, Esopex says, "I have never met one of your kind." The dragon kin. I cannot believe I am seeing what is before my very eyes. Have you the ability to breathe fire, to spit flame from your mouth? Something like that, yes. I have seen fire eaters performing at the House of Eleven Stars. But I suspect what you conjure is altogether different. Yes. I'm known to eat spoons. <laughs> I would like to see that. Do you have a spoon? I can show you. A servant brings you a spoon. Mm. Slight mouth full of uh, burning acid. I've never we seen see? fire do that before. <laughs> what manner of fire is this that you spit? Secret fire. Secret fire. I will, I will speak of this to my liege, Odion Jabal Lazrak. Perhaps he will want to see you for himself. Yes. And he, he speaks tell of the him, Lord of the tell House him the of the Grox, stars. who burns with the invisible flame, will come and see him. A wonder. A wonder. I like it. And you, I know you, he points towards Sinus. I have seen you fight in the great gladiatorial games in Doreo. You have split skins and bones of many a foe. This is true. I serve blood and violence. But it is good that you all have hired this one here. Uh, there would be a few better guardsmen in all the fertile play, if you ask my opinion. And I have never met uh, you before. Um, I'm sorry, I've, I've misspoken. He didn't mean to say I've never met one of one of the swamp dwarves. I have met few of the uh, the Delta dwarves in my day. An industrious people. Truly, your hard work pays dividends. You're on mute. Yep. Uh, yes, uh, we're not coming so uh, south uh, usually, but uh, thank you for your uh, kind words. So and... Esopek kind of has a lot of pleasantries and flatteries and small talk. Let me see uh, if I may your inventory. And he wants to take a look at the goods that you have brought. Can I cast... Uh, I want to cast Enhance Ability on Atticus. But so that uh, in order not to, to be very suspicious, I want to say, before we start this, uh, this conversation, let us pray for divine uh, guidance so that no one is getting uh, an unfair trade. And as I'm praying, I want to touch Peculiar. Atticus. Peculiar. I would like to see this prayer that you perform. Of course, of course. You, Sinkur, majestic deity, guide us, give us golden tongues and sharp ears so that we know what your will is. And Atticus has advantage on all charisma checks for the next hour. Excellent. You have the fox's cunning eagle splendor. Uh, that's, I think that's Owl's yeah. Wisdom, if I'm not... 
if I'm mistaken. Uh, no, uh, our wisdom. The, the target has advantage on. Oh, no, no, wisdom checks. Eagle splendor. <laughs> splendor. Yes, yes. Eagle the splen splendor. The splendor of an eagle radiates from you. I yeah. do not understand the half of your prayer, but uh, it was quite a chant. I feel the stirring in my blood. Because you hear with your ears and not with your heart. But thank you. So he takes a look at the, the goods that you have brought. They are legitimate trade goods. Grains, salts, herbs, spices. Uh, maybe Grazam um, you know, adds in a bit of knowledge about them. And Atticus, if you'd like to negotiate, give us a persuasion check with your advantage from the <coughs> spell. Hey, well, here we go. It's going to be big. It's going to be 24. He offers you a sum which is nearly twice what these would fetch at the Golden Palace. I know I, I would be able to turn a profit even still. Tower Beer is on hard times and their vaults have been enriched over years. They have uh, something of a debt racking up to me, but I am uh, working out a deal for them to compensate me in the rich incenses that their hierophants have traditionally prepared. So he kind of goes on about how this is going to work out in his favor in the end, but he offers you a, a hefty payment. Please stay for a while and rest. Eat. We are going to, to have supper. If there's anything else I can do to be of assistance to you all, I would be happy to. Actually, there is something you could be of assistance to us with. Perhaps it would be better if we spoke about it in private, though. You know, business is business. Come inside. So he gets the... The, the the servants there to you know start unloading the wagon and they they bring you out your payment and he lets you count it out and you're like okay I've got you've you've made some profit here so that's nice and then you go inside and and um I guess you probably were on site already but he probably like shuts you go into a, a private room he shuts the door and um he um he he himself pours wine he takes out a, a nice skin of wine and pours uh, cups for everyone. Let us toast to our fortune. Distributes the cups of wine to everyone. Uh, Icoriates can drink. It's just not required for you to sustain your life. You can still drink. You can still enjoy the, the flavor of it and whatnot. Fox has got one hand full of goblet, which he's sipping. He's got his payment sitting in front of him. It's, he's arranging it like poker, poker players play with the chips. It's not so much counting it as seeing how aesthetically pleasing it is in different combinations. I it is all there. Can... I assure you, you do not need to count it in front of my eyes. Oh, my apologies. I'm not counting it. I'm admiring it, my friend. Wealth is supposed to be pretty. Us! Uh, this is the dragon in you. Ha 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 ha! Your horde. Is this right? I have said the right word. A droplet in my horde, my friend. A mere droplet? I would like to see the entire horde someday. Your eyes will have to grow bigger. <laughs> oh, my eyes can grow quite big. Quite big indeed. <laughs> he you know, slaps himself across the, the belly and he, he seems to quite revel in the idea of seeing a giant dragon horde. Atticus, you had, some, you had something on your mind. <laughs> Well, my my dear friend Esopek, I am so glad that we had this serendipitous encounter here in the city. But I have to speak truthfully with you. There is another reason why we came here. Perhaps you could help us. We're looking for a friend, a friend who uh, may have come to the city. Perhaps you may have heard of someone who perhaps trespassed on the castle grounds or may have made their way inside of the castle at some point. I can't remember, was it like a week ago or that he was missing? Over, over two weeks ago, yeah. So I, I, I give him... I give maybe him getting like close to three weeks by this point. 
Yeah. I give him like an appropriate time frame, and I and I say, I say, have you heard anything within the city? Perhaps something from the guards in regards to this a, a person who had come here. Your friend, you say. Well, he's a good associate. Hmm. We we it just is want to good know what... to have friends. Always good to have friends around, and a true friend is always around. I have heard nothing of a trespass, though. I'm sorry. Hmm. Has anything interesting happened in the castle? Perhaps something. The only Rallying news that guards? I can think of that is of note is uh, the high priest has gone on some kind of retreat or pilgrimage into the steplands. The high priest, you say? The high so, uh, Tarbir Palace always has a high priest. Um, there's there's king and queen of the palace, and then pretty much hierarchically right below them is the high priest some will even argue at certain historical points that the high priest is even more powerful than the king and queen but that's you know that's political religious type debates uh the current high priest of the tarbir palace is eshak eshak tarabir and uh According to this, this foreign merchant that you're speaking to here, Eshak is currently away. He went out into the steppe lands on, you know, he said, either a retreat or a pilgrimage of some kind. Isn't that a bit unusual that one of the, the order of the higher France would go missing when they have so much political and strike and fighting going on? Of course, surely that's suspicious. I can ask one of the uh, locals that attend me here. They might be able to give us some more information. I'm sure. Would it's you give me? Topic. Would you give me a moment? I will call. The I will call them in. Oh, and do have oh, some more oh. wine. He he pours you some more wine, Guax. Don't mind if I do. Thank you very much. Uh, he pours himself. We need more wine, anyhow. I will be back. So. As, as, as he goes, Atticus will excuse himself to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be making a roll here. Because there actually is a skill check value associated with this serendipitous encounter. Okay. Paragon. Serendipitous encounter. All right. A plus eight ability check is what the NPC gets, which that's not bad at all. That's pretty good. Okay. So he is going to be saying something when he comes back. Uh, what about Grazam? How do you find this wine that he is serving here? Wine from the Fertile Splay, uh, from the, the Badlands region. Before before drinking, I want to ask. Uh, I don't believe you put lemon in the wine too. Huh? I have never taken lemon with wine, uh, but it can ah. be arranged. No, 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 no. Because I saw you put, uh, putting lemon in the in the water. Uh, so your your uh, 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 he points to like one of your you know he doesn't know if it's like a tendril or your hair or something, but it's like drip like dipping into your your wine it's in your your drink it's oh yes of course it is it, it, it has a, a very special flavor you want some i have a lot i have different flavors uh, depending on the part of my body that, that they oh, i have not uh, drank enough to accept that uh, challenge okay. uh, i have consulted with my um with one more knowledgeable of the of the tarbir palace Eshak has gone to see an oracle in the steplands to consult about the current blight that the that the, the palace is facing. It is not known how long he will be gone for. These things have their own measure to them. Is there some concern with your missing colleague? Uh, it, it, it is no great matter, really. We just, uh, uh, 
Um, so Atticus is is trying to avoid divulging the name of the of Miraman mm -hmm. or the um, the connection to the this, the Golden Palace or anything. But he will he he will say, "Oh, well, perhaps we will uh, we will spend some time uh, drinking in this this culture of the city here." Perhaps there there are things yet. I mean, we found you, which is which has been nothing but gra a gracious blessing on our evening. So perhaps there are others like you. Perhaps you can introduce us to someone oh. else in the city. Darabir Palace is a cold grey brazier. I am one of the few embers that is burning bright here. Ah, well, that's a refreshing piece of honesty there. Hmm. If I were you. I would leave as soon as you can. Go somewhere else where things are brighter. Hey, bring me back some more of these, uh, these grain that you have brought. I will trade with you again another day. But if you stay here, you will be losing, uh, you will be losing your fortunes. You will be uh, wasting your money is what I mean to say. Yes, yes, I agree. Well, if, if we were to waste our money somewhere in the city and we wanted to perhaps lay low for a while where, where would you recommend <laughs> you are already there my friend ah. <laughs> very well I will, I will touch this is not the golden palace this is not derail yeah. you are not going to find wine houses and lavish inns and uh, festive festivities and other such things this small shop that I am uh, tending to here is the closest thing you'll find to it. I bring with me the a grand array of the House of Eleven Stars. And I thank my lucky stars again that we've met you. It mm. is mutual beneficial. Right. This makes me happy. Ah, the food is ready. You hear, you know, uh, someone ringing a bell. Please let us eat. And they, they bring you this nice meal of uh, fish and prawns steamed and various kinds of vegetables and fruits of the area all, you know, laid out in nice trays. And they've got, you know, fresh baked breads and butter and eggs and this kind of uh, nut paste with spices on it that you can spread on there. And they've got so all these kinds of, you know, fruit paste and honeyed um, figs and little cakes and whatnot for, for sweets. Um so, yeah, he, he treats you, and he seems quite happy about that. Fantastic. At Atticus will uh, eventually, o over the, the dinner, he will make quiet, whispered talk to to Gwox, Grazam, and Sinus at some point. He'll say, well, it looks like the city isn't really that well for carousing. I don't think we'll be able to find much from the peasant folk around here, but perhaps the only other way would be to peer into the city us peer into the castle ourselves the undercroft i don't think that that will happen at any time soon though unless we can find some way in there we sneak in well if 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 you think you you can manage that of course i can well, um Atikus, maybe you could ask you know, the two princes were doing funny business uh, there. Maybe you could ask how someone would do funny business in the palace. Isn't it guarded? Does it have secret doors? Does it have things that most people don't know of? So something that, that, that we could use in our benefit. Ask him. I, I don't think he likes me very much. Ask him. Reza, the more secret doors and hidden away places there are in a place the more opportunities there are for people to do dodgy things uh, as esopek my my gracious host i've heard tales of s uh, twin princes that went missing from the city many 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 years ago have you heard such a tale i do not think they went missing i think that they were locked away in the dungeon a dungeon. What did they do? I think they were murderers. I think they murdered within the actual palace itself. They were, um... 
Uh, maybe they should have been like Sinus here, fighting in the, uh, the blood sport. They were not princely ones. They were not noble uh, of heart. That is the tale as I understand it to be. This happened... I think this happened many years ago. This is not a recent, uh, recent news, no. Mm. And, and no one's ever heard of the princes since they were locked away in a dungeon. I think not. I think that they were they were condemned there. Condemned princes. I believe so. I have not heard of princes being locked up in dungeons in such a fashion. I believe but... they killed a priestess. Well, that's that's definitely a a ma on the family's name. If if that's the case, that might do it. Justice was done. It was done long ago, and. Uh, well, let us be grateful for that. More wine! And he, he gets the, the second wineskin out. And ser serves you all, including himself, a nice big uh, hefty swig. Ugh. The wine here is very sweet. Where I come from, the wine burns delightfully like a lover in your mouth <laughs> yes like a lover yes keep the drinks coming <laughs> <laughs> so the dwarves know something of this too ah there's a reason why there's so many dwarves in the swamplands here ne? well we they don't just crawl out of little uh, uh, mud holes in the ground no <laughs> Not everything you hear is true, my friend, but we know how to have a good time with drinks and with women. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes both at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Good things always are better when paired. But tell me, my friend, it sounds weird. How would those princes think of getting away after such a murder? I mean... Just walk out of the front door? Just, hey, I just killed the priestess. Eh? Whoa, boy, I'm living now. There must be something else going on there. There must be more to the story. I am not a historian. I am not from this land. Mm. Is this, uh, have a connection with your missing friend, Atticus? Oh, well. I just wanted to hear if the story had any real groundings. I mean, if if you know of it, then it must have some sort of weight to it. What a terrible crime to have done, to have been committed to a priestess. Hmm. Yes. Perhaps... Tarabir Palace follows the old law. They have kept to the religious law since time immemorial. These are not games that they are playing. They keep... Uh, strictly close uh, their faith is of utmost importance hmm, the old ways you say uh, does Atticus know perhaps is there is there some special rite or yeah. religion that they're following mm -hmm. yeah so there are like a, a pantheon of gods in this region and as far as you know they give them all uh, kind of a due reverence uh, the Hierophants in particular, that's like an old line of priests. They're, they consider themselves to be the first priests. They, their, their order. Um, if you ask them and you read their, their texts and scriptures, before them it was just, you know, heathens worshipping demons out in the middle of the cactus forest. Yeah, it was just nothing but, you know, barbaric um, um, apostasy. And they like founded the first true religion and actually started following the, the, the celestial gods, you know, the gods of the upper planes. Uh, but since their order is so old, you know, they have very strict and harsh rules that come from a time when, um, you know, survival and life or death meant, you know, hinged upon your people obeying the rules as, as rigidly as possible. There wasn't a lot of flexibility uh, in, socially speaking. So some would consider the Hierophants to be 
um, zealous, outdated even, antiquated. Um, but it's hard to deny that they have been the stewards of the original forms of worship of the gods, the gods that people do still recognize to this day, uh, even though a lot of people don't follow the what you might call the old way. They follow more like a reformed or a modernized way of, of worshiping the gods. Um, what else could I say about that? Um, there's a few different gods. You know, Sinus has one and Grazam has one and uh, Parlon was mentioning another one. So uh, Sinus follows the god of, of war. Grazam follows the god of majesty and ascension. Uh, Zamanker, the forge master, is a, 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 a crafting god. Uh, there's a trickster goddess. Um, yeah. Is that, help, is that helpful we'll, for you? We'll, we'll, we'll reach up and touch Remus's shoulder and he'll be like, he'll be like I have many, many thanks for gods. After all, this divine servant ensured the return of my father after the war. And Re Remus will uh, stand at attention and, and, and he'll say something like, uh, to serve and to protect this one here sought f uh, had favor in the gods' eyes. Perhaps still the favor is here. Remus, uh, so Atticus will be like, well, of course, of course the god favors me. How else would I have met Esapek? Before your eagle's splendor wears off, Atticus, is there any final check that you would like to utilize it for? If, if you're not sure, I can maybe throw out a suggestion to you. Yeah, give me a suggestion. <laughs> okay. So this Esopek has helped you in a way um, and has told you some things. You're not sure how long he's actually been working here as a merchant. Maybe he knows more than he's letting on. Uh, you can try to press the issue. Make another charisma check of whatever what? type you would like. If you succeed, he might end up revealing something or trusting you more. If you fail, uh, he might close up or maybe there'll be some kind of consequence to failing it. Nothing too bad, uh, unless you go way extreme. But con considering what we're, we're talking about the the, the gods, um, I'm going to say a, a, a prayer to the to the god who has safely returned my father, and I will use my kismet to give me guidance. And I and I will I will um try to say to, to Esopek in, in a way that's not too direct, but enough, maybe he'll pick it up. And I'll say like, you know, if, if someone was to go into the castle to, to see the, the truth of the matter between all these rumors and all these legends and these old hierophantic religions, that sounds like a tale worth telling. How would one go about getting into the castle proper to see with their own eyes? Very well. <laughs> Good. Yeah, go ahead and make your charisma check. Uh, sounded like persuasion. What do you think? Sounded like delicate diplomatic words. Didn't sound like you, 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 were, you were bluffing him. I can curse. Okay, well, that splendor and that kismet is a fantastic... 27 Ooh, 18 wow. on the die okay on the, on the d4 <laughs> Atticus come with me if we may uh, it is not that I do not trust your companions but I sense this is a very personal matter and I would like to leave it up to your discretion what of it you would like to share with the others oh yes of, of course uh, 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 Aylfoot, try not to drink all of the wine while we're gone. Breaking into the prison goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Esopek takes Atticus into his personal chamber, like his bedroom. Shuts the door and he locks it with a key. It's, it's dark in here except for a single lit candle. It's a large, large candle, good flame on it. 
but imagine you can't really make out the room. It's just dark silhouettes of furnishings and bed, and there's some 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 drapings. Uh, the window has like this. Um, what do we call it? Like the the latticework screen, right? The decorative screen, and he even shuts that and like draws curtains over it as well. He puts on some soft music. <laughs> He he comes in close indeed, but not in the way that Guax is is getting on with. Uh, and he comes in close, and he does it even. He, he puts his arm on your shoulder. What you ask of me is not something that I quite know. Like anyone else, anyone who walks about Darabir can see the palace front door, the palace back door, many many windows up the sides of the walls and towers. I know nothing more. But I am here as well for more than just mercantilism. My liege sent one before me some time back, not recently. Mm. A trusted one, an agent, a warrior even. We called him Snakebiter. There is a curse upon Tarabir. I do not use that word lightly. There is a curse of great proportion over Tarabir, house and blood. Snakebiter knew this as my liege Odeon knows. Snakebiter came here to speak with the Hierophants, to try to show them that they needed to take steps to alleviate and remedy their offenses to their gods. We wanted to establish trade with them. My liege is an ambitious man, and he sees many possibilities as a great player of game sees ahead many moves on a game board. There is profit to be found here if Tarbir can but get to its feet. I do not think Snakebiter is with us any longer. As best I have been able to glean, he left Tarbir. He did not meet any grim fate, though the Hierophants here did not take favorably to his words. He left. He sought something. I know not what it was. But I think he has not survived in his task. If you this, plan to this do your own task, Atticus... Tread with great care, for there is something, something to this place, something dark that slithers, an asp in the shadows. Miraman was his name, and he was a great friend. And I feel I return, I have to repay a debt because I can still remember his face when I had my father return to me from war, and he did not. I feel as if, if I didn't at least make the chance, make an attempt to find him, it would be, I could not call him my friend. I think he has gone somewhere within the castle. I think he has searched for this curse, so to speak, and he has met with a terrible fate. I need to find him. No matter what the cost. Hmm. If you have any suggestion as to how we can begin our search, I will take it with the greatest sincerity and I will keep any secret you have as secret as this. His eyes search you, right? He, he He's very close range. He looks right into your eyes as though trying to... Uh, read you, right? To try to in, in, intuit your your motives. 
a friend in trouble is like a thorn in our side, a thorn in our heart even, and it is not easy to alleviate this. I understand why you take action. I truly have heard nothing of this Miruman or any interloper in Tarabir Palace. There is nothing. Though there could be something clandestine that none are aware of. Let us not discount that as you speak of recent times and recent plots that perhaps are still unfolding. Tarabir Palace could mount a defense against a traditional assault. They could close tight their doors, muster their conscripts, call what guards and priests to their defense. I still think the city could could stand off a, a traditional fight. But against you and your comrades slipping in with tact and cunning and perhaps magic, I think you would you would have good chances. I do not believe any guards patrol the undercroft or the back entrance. In fact, I believe the back entrance has been locked and warded and people have been avoiding it. The front entrance leading into the keep proper, that would be uh, much more dangerous. There are guards regularly stationed there and patrolling the insides of the keep. So, I know there's a lot of information, but the mm. the basics of it are no one's heard about any Miramon or anything happening. Who knows? Um, there's not a lot of guards on patrol, but there are some. And if they have time, they can muster. But if you slip by craftily, you might just slip past their notice. You didn't see a lot of patrols. There's like a pair of guards here, and sometime later a pair there. There were like four at the gatehouse. And apparently inside the keep, there will be plenty. But in the back entrance down below in the undercroft, it seems like that's just like locked up tight and it's people are avoiding it. I have only seen but one person frequent by the back door. It is a priest. He seems to check it to make sure it's still locked. Um, he does not linger there. I've seen him make regular rounds. How often and when? Frequently. I have seen him there both day and night. He seems worried. I do not know him personally. I have never spoken to this man. Uh, bald. He's a bald man. So he specifically does refer to him as priest, which is a lower position. Uh, Hierophant would be above that, and then high priest is like the high priest of the of the palace, who is directly with the king and the queen. The high priest currently is gone. He's out to see some oracle out in the steppe land. Hmm. Uh, this this oracle and the high priest, they've been gone for some time. Is that right? And their return is not known. Uh, and they will be I back. believe the oracle dwells in the steppe land, in a cave or a shrine. The High Priest has been gone for some days now. Well, that's fortunate for us. Perhaps we should make this attempt while the High Priest is not here. Tonight, perhaps. Very early in the morning before the sun rises. Perhaps we could see this, this priest who keeps checking the door. Perhaps we could strong arm an answer out of him. Maybe even he can open the door for us. Although it will be risky, depending on our circumstances when we find him. What, what time, time round ideas are the best? What time would this priest be at the door? Perhaps under the cover of night at some point? I have seen him there. Just by chance, passing by by night. I believe I saw him checking the door, but he did not linger. Well... We will make sure that we finish our business here and just the business that we have with you. 
in regards to us being merchants. And then even if we're caught, I'd want to make sure that you're not caught up in any of this. So perhaps we should part ways after this. I think it'd be the best. Tread carefully and do not wrong me nor my liege Odeon. Your, I will your do, queen, your do my queen best to protect you. is a great sorceress. My liege is not without his own powers. Perhaps if all goes well, we can share what we find there. Perhaps it will help both of our masters in that regard. But for now, we will try our best to get into the, the Undercroft and so it is you do not cross me and i do not cross you and perhaps we will continue to mutually benefit from one another and he takes your arm in like this this grasp that's a, apparently from his homeland this is how we shake where i come from so be it and I, i'll give him a firm shake all right, so Atticus, you have uncovered some additional details. And also, thanks to Grazam, giving you much splendor and your own prayers too, your kismet of, of, uh, uh, of favor. Um, so I suggest we pause here. I think this is a natural resting spot. And I think what happens after this is opening up a whole new thing. So I think that will be a great opening to the next session. Thank you guys. This has been really cool. AJ, you're very muted. good. I'm in. You're in. <laughs> uh, we'll probably just do the same time here in two weeks. Sounds cool. good. Yeah, Everybody who has watched live or catching us later on. Thank you for watching. We'll be back in two weeks' time to continue with this plot. Uh, expect some interesting occurrences and noteworthy happenings. Uh, I can't wait to see... And lots of stabbing. <laughs> of that stabbing might well. happen. There is a chance. I, I think a, a decent chance that that will be happening too. Cool. Well, I look forward to seeing what happens as you guys try to delve uh, into the Undercroft here. All right. Uh, well, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys, for playing, and I look forward to the next session.